So today we're going to start talking about filter effects that are available to you in software programs such as GIMP, but also Photoshop, even Illustrator, and a lot of graphical uh, programs. Now before I dive in here, I want to talk a little bit about filters themselves, especially the artistic ones. Normally when folks first start out with these type of software packages, they catch the filter drop down menu, they then apply a filter to the entire graphic and ooh look, it's super artsy. I want to warn people that there's kind of two mentalities on this as far as using filter effects. Number one is you are going to run into designers who just we are able to recognize which filter you used out of the gate and some designers will argue that this is a cheap cop out as far as what you are doing to the image. Others on the other hand uh, have the argument that if I we cannot tell what filter you use then you're using it right. So with that in mind I encourage uh, often what I'll do is I'll encourage my students play around with the filters just get it out of your system. But understand there are really two types of filters. There are the artistic or graphical types, but then also we have these fine line editorial fixing of the image type of filters. Having said that, however, to emphasize as far as some things like Gaussian blurs, denoising, etc., there's only so much you can do to a graphic to fix it. I mean, you get a bad photograph, it's still a bad photograph. So keep that in mind, especially if you're the one going out into the field and having to do the, take the pictures. It isn't a matter of, oh, well, you know, it's super blurry here. I'm going to be able to sharpen that up, no problem, and make it super sharp. You may actually either blow out the image or it may get too contrasty and now you're stuck because you need to turn around and try to take the photo all over again. So let's take a look at some of these here. What I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to zoom in to about 200% here, just so we can really see the picture. So let's talk about filters in GIMP. Your filters in GIMP, you literally have a drop down menu called filters. Now, under here, you have several types of filters. You have the blur, the enhanced, distort, light shadow, noise, artistic and decor are some that a lot of folks like to play with. And next to them, you're going to see different icons. So for instance, you're like, let's jump back up to blur here. And you can see the little G next to it. So let's go ahead and choose Gaussian blur. With each of the filter types, you are going to get this drop down menu here as far as what you can do as far as the actual option is concerned here. Sometimes a Gaussian blur can save you a little bit as far as trying to make the graphic um, a little bit more like maybe you need to just fuzz out the edges a little bit so you can see I can super blur it or you know I can completely remove the blur but maybe kind of do a real light there just to kind of fuzz the eyes there a little bit and fuzz around the fur. Like its counterparts, friendly reminder everybody, you do have that split view available to you in GIMP, so you can kind of, it'll just give you that split that you can drag back and forth to see the changes here. So, but this is an example of a built-in effect with the G. I want to show you another option though, and this is kind of further down the line where you get into more specifically, you have over here, you have Python foo and script foo, where you're actually developing scripts. If I go ahead under, there was one I believe under, here we go, decor, old photo. Notice how it has a set of cogs here instead of the G. So if I go ahead and choose old photo, notice how it's a little bit different, but also notice at the top here, it says script foo. This isn't so much a, I am going to edit it on the fly, but what it is, is I am going to set several attributes and then have the script run to change the graphics. So for instance, I'm going to leave this at the default for old photo and I'm going to say, okay. And you can actually see now it's gone through. It generated a brand new image for me here using the reference image here. 
So that's the big difference there. So yes, they're technically both filters. One, however, the ones with the letter G next to them are the ones that you can kind of tweak and play with directly on the graphic, while the ones that have the cogs next to them are scripts that once you set them up and you set your properties for it, GIMP is gonna go through and actually run the overall script for you to generate what you're looking for. Now, one more thing that I wanna point out as far as working with effects and filters are concerned is, honestly, it's a rarity that you may be looking at it and saying to yourself, I need to apply uh, the filter to the entire image. This is where, once again, our selection tools come into play here. So like if I go ahead here, so I am on the eclipse, the ellipse, and what I'm gonna do is, okay, so I have my feather edges. I'm actually gonna change this a little bit. Let's take this up super high. Let's do like 70. And I'm gonna make a circle, a selection circle around our puppy's head here. Now, just a reminder here, I've made this selection, and in a previous video where we talked about the selection tools, you remember these are like barriers also. So what's happening now is I could apply a filter that only affects inside here. So like just to demonstrate, if we go in and, oh, what would be one I'd wanna do here? Let's go with cartoon. Let's see how cartoon looks. And there you go. Notice with the feathering, you see how it's kind of feathering out past your marching ants here. And you can see here kind of pulling it in a little bit. So once again, it's taking that inner area and adding a filter effect to it. Now though, I'm gonna cancel out of that. I'm not gonna commit that. Another option you have though is under that select drop-down menu. Remember, to get rid of your selection, you're using that none. However, you also have the invert option. Inverting means that it's going to take that barrier and flip it. So if I hit invert, might be a little hard to see on the screen here, but if you're following along on a graphic, I want you to look along the outer edge here. You should now also see marching ants on the outside as well. So imagine if you will, like we took a cup, we put it over the face of the puppy, and but everything else is still exposed around that cup. So instead of the effect now being applied inward of your selection, it's now the rest of the area. So let's go ahead back into filter just so we can see it. Let's repeat cartoon. Notice the difference here. So Notice I've got that nice feathering going on. Uh, we can actually come down here. Let's zoom out maybe to like 50% so you can really see it. Very, very loud as far as a design goes. I mean, honestly, I'd probably even kind of take this down a little bit. Like maybe it adds a nice little oomph, but it's not completely overwhelming the graphic. That's often uh, kind of some of the newbie mistakes that I see with filters. Am I saying never ever use a filter? No, but you want you don't wanna go all in on a filter either. So for instance, like if I choose a vignette effect here, there you can see, you know, kind of going a little really hardcore there as far as the effect goes, but I am still able to kind of come in, you know, maybe if I center that there a little bit more I can get a nice effect going there. And again, notice how I'm bringing in that vignette effect, but notice because I still have that barrier there, it's not actually affecting the face. And then one more just to show you, you know, I often see what folks will do is they, they latch onto these cartoon. So for instance, I'll all of a sudden get, let's go with cubism. And it's one of those, okay, it's fun, it's neat, but you know, it is kind of a hard sale as far as the overall design goes. I would be tying something else into this as far as the overall design goes. But 
that's honestly the best advice I can give you for right now is, is if you want to, you know, just play with the filters, look at what they do. You have so many options here. And one cool thing about GIMP is that, yes, there are sites out there that you can go out and actually find scripts that will run for you as far as doing additional effects. So for instance here, like, uh, let me go ahead and do select none here. But there are some in here as far as like rendering is concerned. So like if I did flames. Let's do the brightness. Take up custom gradient. Let's see what that pumps out for us here. And you can see along the bottom here, it's actually going through that process. I may have cranked that a little too high. There we go. But now you can see I've got some flame effects going on here on top of the filter effect there. Okay, um, but you know, I might've wanted to do this on a different layer, then I could then come back. Remember those modes we talked about for your layers? You could have uh, kind of tweaked that, but these are some of the other filter effects you can do. And I'm gonna edit undo that. So that kind of gives you a real brief overview as far as filters are concerned. Um, you've got your standard blurs, enhanced distorts, light and shadow and noise, which I consider to be more of if we need to make small tweaks to a photograph, but we don't want it to look super duper designy or artistic. Once you get past those, you kind of get more into um, the graphical filter effects. So I encourage you, grab a photo, play around with them and see what you can come up with.